Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today may seem really different and that is because I have finally learned how to hook up my new camera to my software so I can use my mic. Very exciting for me. I don't know if it is for you, but I feel like it looks so crisp. So if I keep looking right here, it's because I'm looking at the monitor and I'm like, wow, she looks so crisp. Today we are covering 10 things you should never, ever, ever buy brand new. I stand by them wholeheartedly because there are many of these things that I'm going to say that already exist in this world. You do not need to buy a brand new, go to a thrift store, find a secondhand place, go to Facebook marketplace. There are literally so many of these items that already exist and need a new home and they're going to perform just as well as if you bought it brand new. So here's my list of 10 things. Let's get into it. Okay. Number one, you may not be surprised by this answer, but I'm going to say clothes. There is hundreds of thousands, if not more pieces of clothing that exist on this planet. And the textile industry is one of the worst in the world. To be honest, if you had to compare them all, the fashion industry is, is pretty freaking awful. So with that being said, if you are looking for a new dress for an event, if you're looking for a costume for a birthday party, if you're looking for new clothes to wear to work, I would highly, 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 highly recommend that you go to a thrift store or a consignment shop or even online. There are platforms like Poshmark or even The Real Real, which does designer secondhand, that you could opt for brand new clothes for you, but not brand new for the earth. <laughs> I have seen clothes at the stores that still have tags on them that were never even worn before. Some pieces even give you that like vintage look. So you'll look really like up and coming and trendy. I've seen so many things from fast fashion brands that end up there to designer brands that end up there that somebody just doesn't want anymore to, I mean, literally I've seen jeans that are like high quality jeans that are $5 at a thrift store. You can find some really amazing things there. And I also feel like this is one of the most important ones that you could definitely never buy anything new ever again is because there are thousands of clothes that get donated to thrift stores and secondhand shops like a day a day and a lot of times these don't actually get bought or purchased by anybody once they're they've been donated and so the thrift stores end up shipping them literally anywhere else i mean it could be across the country they could end up in the ocean and these people have to live with these clothes in landfills because nobody wanted them and a lot of times their shirts that are in perfectly good condition just somebody wore it twice and then said no nah, i don't want it anymore and then they just went ahead and donated it so give those clothes a second life by not supporting brand new fast fashion brand clothes and shopping secondhand. Number two, and the next couple of ones are all going to be like home item related, but number two is going to be vases. There are literally so many glass, high quality, even glass vases that you can find at thrift stores and secondhand shops. You can find them like big, small. You can even find like those little glass ones that you could like store jewelry in, which is not technically a vase, but it's glass. So I'm just going to throw it in with this vase category here, but vases, you can find them literally in any shape and size and all you have to do is just go down to the home decor aisle in a thrift store and then you'll see like literally hundreds of them hundreds there's no need to buy it brand spanking now there's no need when the glass vases like there's there's nothing wrong with them a lot of times they don't even have water stains okay number three is going to be any kind of furniture that is not upholstered so any kind of shelves tv stands desks even all those things can be easily cleaned and inspected when you're in store to make sure that there's no major damage or any kind of things that could have like bugs in it or anything like that you can easily inspect it and those pieces give your home such a homey feeling a vintage look a lot of times if you pick places like or you search places like facebook marketplace you can find it's like such nice quality things that people are just redecorating in their home and they're like oh i don't have space for this dresser anymore so does anybody want it and a lot of times it's like a thousand dollar dresser that they're selling for a hundred dollars so those are all things that i truly believe you don't need to buy brand new because there are so many options out there. And a lot of times like I have, you can't see it in camera, but right next to me, there is actually a TV stand that was a bookshelf of a family friend who no longer needed it. It was just sitting in storage for years and I got it and it's black. And I was like, okay, like I want more like white furniture. I'm trying to keep it light and bright. And so I ended up painting it and it gives like such a wonderful aesthetic and look to my room. And all it needed was just a fresh coat of paint. So those are definitely ideas that you 
can take if you are moving, about to move, looking to redecorate a room, if you're preparing to, I don't know, decorate your office. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just coming up with random things off the top of my head. If you are looking to do any of those things, definitely purchase the furniture that is not upholstered. I do have to emphasize that because I do feel like upholstered furniture is a little bit different here, but anything that is not upholstered, you can definitely buy secondhand. Do not buy that new. Okay. We're still on the, the topic of home, home decor. So the next one is actually going to, I'm going to group, it's two things technically, but I'm going to group them in the same category. And that is going to be picture frames and mirrors. Again, the same thing that I was talking about with vases, picture frames and mirrors are everywhere online. If you're looking for a really specific, like full length mirror, I find that Facebook marketplace has so many options that have that antique feel, a vintage feel. If you're looking for a rounded one that's sitting on like a stand, there's plenty of them that you can hang on the wall for your bathroom, particular mirror as like an accent mirror for a, a certain place in your home, then I've seen those too. Like I've seen so many mirrors literally everywhere. Same thing with picture frames. In fact, I actually have this story. So I needed a picture frame, very specific one, specific size to do this project I was working on at home. So I went to Michael's to go find the picture frame and I was there and looking around and honestly, like the cheapest one I could find at Michael's was like $40 and it was like such low quality. I was like, are you kidding me? Like $40 for this little flimsy plastic thing that I feel like I could break if I just like lightly tapped it on the floor right now. Lo and behold, you go to a, a thrift store and you can find so many picture frames, whether it's a five by seven or a certain like 12 by 16, I think was the one I was looking for. They're in much better shape because they're often made of wood. There's a lot of times beautiful artwork in them. So if you're looking for art, that's definitely a way that you can opt for unique art in your home versus the mass produced art that you can find in someplace like Home Goods or like Target or something. There are just so many picture frames and mirrors out there that you can buy secondhand. They're, I personally, I don't think you need to buy those brand new. They're often in great shape. You don't need to buy them now. Okay, last one on the home decor topic is going to be baskets. I don't know what it is about baskets, but like people love baskets. And a lot of times, one sec. Yeah, I don't know what it is about baskets, but I just feel like baskets are so popular and I always find them at Target when people are reorganizing and decorating. And a lot of times when I go to thrift stores, I can see hundreds of baskets that have been donated because I don't know what it is about, I don't know, Easter baskets. Maybe families like get them for Easter for their kids and then they realize like, okay, I don't need this basket anymore. And then they donate it, which is another topic, which we're going to get to in just a second here. But if you are looking for baskets, I can guarantee to you that if you go to a thrift store, you're probably going to find exactly what you're looking for in the exact shape and size. There are just that many that are floating around thrift stores and they're in great shape most of the time. Okay. I lied. I have one more home decor, but this one is a little bit different. Okay, if, if you were a seasonal girly like myself, I, I'm a fall girly. I'm a sucker for fall. I love fall leaves. I love pumpkin spice lattes. I love that. But I know there's a lot of people out there that are like hardcore Christmas girlies or, or guys. I'm not judging. You could be a guy watching this video. And if you are, I'm glad you're here. The amount of seasonal decor that gets donated is actually ridiculous. It's so much. And I just think that during those seasons of the year, people are overly consuming or they have, you know, grandparents that have, I don't know, decide they want to go purge their garage and they're like, okay, I don't need all of these boxes anymore. So they end up just donating them anyways. And a lot of times I find the cutest, most unique, eclectic, seasonal decor items that I have ever seen in my life in a thrift store because they're a little bit older. So you can't actually like go to a certain store and buy that item anymore. It just gives such a unique flair to your seasonal decor. And honestly, I've seen seasonal decor for every season, Thanksgiving, Halloween, Christmas, Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, really any holiday I have seen it at a thrift store. So my one advice to you is that if you are looking for new seasonal decor and you do want to buy it secondhand, I would recommend going probably a month or two months in advance to really get the lay of the land at the thrift store or whatever store you're going to to purchase these things secondhand. So that way you can kind of get like the cream of the crop items because especially for Christmas, Christmas maybe I would recommend even three months in advance because people will donate all of these items in the spring seasons when they're doing their seasonal spring cleaning. So if you get there earlier, you get more of the pick of the cutest items and things that match your home decor the most versus if you go about a month before Christmas when a lot of people have already started collecting these items or decorating their homes at this point and you won't have as big of a selection. So just go a little bit in advance so that way you can actually get the best of the best seasonal decor that has been 
donated. Okay, okay, we're moving on from home decor. I promise, I promise we're moving on from home decor. The next one is actually going to be pets. I don't think you should buy pets brand new. There are so many cats and dogs and furry animals that need homes that live in animal shelters that have been in awful situations beforehand and are just looking for a second chance for a forever family. It's so cute. Stop, I'm gonna cry. I think a lot of times with breeders, it's very difficult to find if they're even a reputable breeder. And even though they can tell you one thing, I think a lot of times there's not a lot of people out there that can verify what they're saying. But if you go to an adoption agency or an adoption center, adoption um, shelter, you can really see animals like up close, up close and personal and actually spend time with those animals and actually find one that matches your personality and is going to give you the qualities that you're looking for in a pet. And a lot of times I even feel like people who work with breeders, yeah, they sure they get like the specific breed of dog that they want, but they don't necessarily get the dog that has the best temperament that matches with their home life and their family. And a lot of people end up getting really stressed out about that. And so all that to say, please, please, please adopt. <laughs> don't shop. Next up, games. I don't think you need to buy every single game brand new. And this is why. Well, we'll start with video games first. I think that if you're looking for buying games on like a Wii or like the Switch is big now, you can buy games from like GameStop that have already been loved by somebody else and they no longer wanted that game. Maybe they didn't like it as much or they just played through the game and are moving on to the next one. And so they give them to stores like GameStop who buy from them and then you can purchase it used and it's a brand new game for you. There's nothing wrong with the game. It's just brand new and somebody didn't want it anymore. Anymore. So I definitely feel like for video games, but you don't necessarily need to buy those new. Now, I do know that things like the Switch or if you're like a PC gamer, a lot of those games are on the stream, like streaming cloud or whatever it is. So you can't really buy that used. So a lot of times I like to shop the sales whenever those are going on. And I also like to shop from smaller brands. So I kind of feel like I'm giving back to a um, small business. But anyways, I feel like most games, you do not need to buy those brand new. Okay, on the topic of board games, I also don't really feel like you need to buy board games brand new either. Now, maybe not a puzzle. I would not necessarily recommend a puzzle because I think it could be disappointing if you are doing this puzzle and you get to the last couple of pieces and realize it's missing a few. That would be so disappointing. But if it's something like Monopoly and the only things that are potentially missing from that game are the little like characters that you put on the board to like, you know, clarify where you're at on the board. If it's missing a few of those, I don't think that's necessary. You could be creative and use a pen or a penny or an SD card is sitting on my desk right now you could use that too just get a little bit creative you can still totally enjoy the game without needing every single piece of the puzzle there okay you need every single piece of the puzzle but not every single piece of like a board game necessarily last but not least you do not need to buy books brand new you just don't there are so many books you can buy at a thrift store so many there are so many books that people have read even if it's your neighbor that has read it and they're gonna let you borrow it from them or they'll just give it to you ship it to you for free like there are so many books that are on my bookshelf that i bought from a secondhand bookstore and now they're just sitting on my bookshelf like i already read it and i don't know what to do with it at this point and so a lot of times if somebody is interested in it i just give it to them i'm like here i don't i don't need this book anymore you can have it i just don't feel like books are necessarily something you need to buy brand new the other thing about books that i have recently come to love is public libraries. Now, as a kid, like middle school, high school, I feel like libraries were not something that I actively like took part in. I never really spent a lot of time in there, even though those were definitely something that were offered to me at the time. I just, I don't know, didn't take advantage of it. Then I went to college and I had a lot of friends that studied in libraries and I personally cannot handle silence. It really gives me the heebie-jeebies. And so a lot of times I would go to the libraries to like hang out with my friends. But as far as studying goes and actually like sitting down, like reading books in the library, that was not my thing back in college. But now that I'm older at a ripe age, age of 25, I have rediscovered public libraries and realized how amazing they are. Because a lot of times, like if I, I work from home, so a library gives the opportunity that I can go work from another place and not have to worry about like paying for a coffee or feeling like I'm taking up a table from somebody who needs to eat or something like that. Like a library, there's many spaces there that you can use the free public Wi-Fi, and you can also find a space with a table to get a little bit of work done. Plus, there are thousands of books that libraries have in most cities. I would say every city, actually. I would probably, I put probably put some money down that every city has a public library that you can go to and at least look at the books that they're able to offer. Like, I've been really into romance, so I've been reading some older romances, trying to get up with the times. Maybe they're not like the brand newest, like best book out there that's, you know, just launched, I don't know, a month ago, but they are books that are 
are still enjoyable to read. And there is an app as well. Um, I think I've talked about this in my other videos, but there's an app called Libby. I highly recommend that. You can download it on your phone and it gives you access to like eBooks and audiobooks. All you have to do is just show them that you are an active member of your public library, which is totally free by the way, totally free totally free for your community to be a part of the public library. So all you have to do is literally just go online and register online and um, you have access to all of these books. The other thing with the Libby app that I have found or my, my public library also has its own app as well is that if there is a new book, and maybe there's a wait list to read it. I can hop on the wait list. So in a month I can get access to reading that new book because it'll be my turn. This also goes with textbooks. I don't think you need to buy textbooks brand new. You can definitely buy those used. It's the same information, same material. There are plenty of students that are always like rotating in and out of different textbooks there because there's new classes every semester, especially if you're in college. And a lot of times professors use the same textbooks for many years. So just buy the used one instead of the brand new one. And it's going to save you a ton of money and you're still getting the same material that you need. That is my 10 things that I think you should never buy brand new because there are so many secondhand options out there for you. That you really just don't even need to spend the money. Like save a buck, save, save yourself a few bucks here. Your wallet will thank you. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and a comment down below. If you want to see more like this, if you have questions for me, if there's anything in particular that you want to see from me, it really, really helps me understand what you guys like to see. So I can like, you know, this itch that I have to create content is actually something that you guys want to watch. And of course, if you want to see more of me, please hit subscribe. I am having so much fun doing this and I really appreciate every single person that comes and watches these videos. I post videos every single Monday and Friday. On Fridays, there are videos like this, me talking to you, vlogs, things that are helpful for the environmental community, sustainability for your mind, body, and planet is what I always like to say. And on Monday, I post my podcast on YouTube for anybody who wants to get a little bit more information. We do deep dives on lots of different things in the industry from candles to solar panels to just general low waste living tips to sustainability swaps and food waste reduction. Literally so many topics under the sun. If it is good for your mind, for your body or for the planet, we have probably talked about it or will talk about it at some point in this life that we're living. And that's all I have for you this week. So with that, I will see you next week. Bye.